Um, <clears throat> in a few words, um, I have to say, I, I really wanted to start with that piece in the back, the second piece. Which one? Mm -hmm. Can we go to the next piece? Yes. <laughs> um, because I feel that a lot of people have seen me around here since 89 when I first came out here to teach at the University of Maryland. But there is a film out now, and uh, it's called Precious. And I, I have to say, I am precious. I don't look like precious, but I come from that environment. Um, I'm just now coming out of it <coughs> after years of therapy, several doctors working with me, which I was ashamed to talk about and didn't want to reveal to anybody. There's so much stigma attached to depression and just plain meanness mm -hmm. that comes from slavery with the master. You've seen, I know everybody has seen the mother in the store. And this is another side of our womanhood that we have to really kind of watch uh, and not buy into. Um, because we've all seen the parent on the bus saying, if you say another word, I'm going to beat you in the head. Or I'm going to stop you, better shut up. Yeah. The harsh tone from soft lips of a, of a mother to a child who might not even be able to comprehend what is going on doesn't understand that their crying is taking the parent somewhere else. But this piece is the first piece that I reveal to myself the environment that I was living in. So from that time on, uh, my work always involved things that happened in my life, things that happened to me, things that I saw around me. But because I've had this thing going on since I've been about 12 years old, um, the art that my mother gave me to put me in a certain part of the house. Uh, I guess some of you who are a little older remember, sit in the corner, mm -hmm. you go over there and sit in the corner, and it was like a little triangle, mm -hmm. triangle, and you couldn't face out the corner, you had to face mm -hmm. in the corner mm -hmm. and look at the wall. Mm -hmm. Well, what I didn't realize was that my mother was protecting me from elements in the house. Mm -hmm. So she would give me a piece of paper, crayons, pencils, and I would just draw on the typing paper. And I, when she'd come back home, it's all drawn. See what I did? And I was the good girl. So, to get to a lighter, more happier space. Um, so, I had the Benny Smith Pack crayons, uh, basic, black, brown, yellow, red, green, purple, and blue. And so most of the work you see has those primary colors because that's my, my, my rock, my, my ground. I'm trying to work with colors like Joyce here uses, but, but I, I can't mix them. My mind doesn't see them. I don't see them. So you have a primary color palette even though I have a whole broad uh, perspective of work. But this particular piece is and uh, uh, I'll say an element. I don't want to make it a person because I don't know what happened to that person before they became an adult. And so it went on in my family generation. Then there was an acrimonious kind of atmosphere with three women in the house raising their own children and putting everybody putting their same food in the refrigerator. This is my milk. That's your milk, and there is no our milk. <laughs> you understand? So everything in the house it was like it was it was it was rough. And I was petite. I'm not petite now, but I was tiny, 110 pounds. And when I was younger, I was so small that they put me on a soy food diet to make me um, gain uh, weight because I weighed 98 pounds for a very long time. 
So what you see here is me crying in a pool of tears. And like this green kind of monster, whatever that environment <coughs> was in the house, is like on my shoulders. And then here's the female with the hand on the hip. And you know it's coming down when the women start putting their hand on their hip. <laughs> it's coming down. But within the family, with all of the, the, the women, I lived in a very matriarchal house. And you know, it's hard enough for two women to get along. But for five women to get along in the same house, everybody using the same washing machine. And you know, one bathroom. And you know, it was all tangled up. But somehow, to talk about mothers in the title of your show, my mother was a very brilliant woman. And she knew that I loved to paint and draw. So she set me up with all those tools and books. And they were my therapy. They were my, that was my way out. And so the more intense it was in the house, the better the artwork got. So, you know, so it fed a, a, a wonderful release for me. So I started my career. Uh, uh, very early without really knowing it. I was winning um, little contests and I remember my first art contest that used to give you these big pieces of newsprint mm -hmm. and you fold them and put them in a bucket. I'm giving my age away now. Uh, <laughs> put it in a bucket of water and you opened it out on a flat piece of wood mm -hmm. and they used to mix all the powdered pigments in uh, milk cartons. Mm -hmm. It cut the milk. Anybody remember that? Yeah. 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 somebody uh, proofread it for me now to talk about as a young artist and it's a whole chapter on me painting and what the emotional impact of that was uh, to get away from all that acrimony uh, in the house and so this river of tears and then I, I noticed that I could make something beautiful out of something that wasn't so that revealed itself to me it's like a Comedy, you know, somebody slips on a banana peel and breaks their leg. It's not funny, but a comedian can just have you laughing and gripping your sides, but you have this, this other side of it. So I, I was always working with that duality uh, in my work. And so my mother was the nurturer. And I took everything that she gave me because somehow, innately, I knew that uh, she was helping me. She was uh, uh, really feeding me uh, elements of survival. And so I think in terms of also the title, that mothers, daughters, we do things for our children to help them survive. And so um, because my mother did that, and then we all come to a point in our lives where we judge our parents. We know if they did a good job or not. It, it may come at 20, it may come at 50 or 40, but somehow you knew, ooh, my mother did a good job, or my father did a good job. I'm, 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 I'm on this level, and I'm, 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 I'm on my own, and I'm doing okay. You know, you might not be way up here or way down there, but you're in a safe territory. So this piece, and you can go back to the other piece, is Dorothy's Flowers. I lived in a neighborhood in West Oakland with a candy factory two and a half blocks long across the street from my house. On the opposite corner was an electric company with big bales of wire in these big 50-foot wheels, and that's all I had to look at. And then an old telephone company.